Infinity comes up in physics everywhere, and yet it's not physically real. This is why some physicists have argued that really our problems in the foundations of physics might come from the way that we calculate with the infinitely large and the infinitely small. I just recently learned that they now have backup, the ultra-finitists. That's mathematicians who deny the existence of large numbers. I'm not making this up, guys. Might this be the paradigm shift we've been waiting for? Let's have a look. The universe is infinite in our mathematics. The curvature at the Big Bang is infinite. So is the gravitational tidal force in the middle of a black hole. We have infinities in quantum physics too. All the time when we calculate something, we have to do mathematical gymnastics to get rid of those infinities. The cosmological constant, some physicists think, is a relic of our problems with infinity. And the infinitely large has a flip side that's the infinitely small. Space and time are made of infinitely many points of size zero, at least in our mathematics. This isn't just the case for space and time, it's also the case for quantum physics. In quantum physics, we work with wave functions in a Hilbert space. Don't worry if you don't know what this is, it doesn't matter all that much. You just need to know that Hilbert space too is made of infinitely many points of size zero. It's a continuum. In the past decade, we've seen several physicists rebelling against this abundance of infinities. The cosmologist George Ellis, for example, thinks that careless use of infinity is the reason why physicists ended up believing the multiverse is real. We have also previously talked about Nicolas Gisin, who thinks that we shouldn't work with real numbers because real numbers have infinitely many digits after the point, which requires infinite precision, and that's something which doesn't exist. There's also Tim Palmer, who says that all our problems with quantum mechanics come from using Hilbert space with its continuum. He says we need to discretize it and take only some wave functions in this space. It's like a return to the early days of quantum physics, where the word quantum originated in discreteness. Finite steps, no infinities, no zeros. But most physicists ignore these ideas. They believe that using infinitely large or infinitely small numbers is just a mathematical tool, an approximation. It's innocent. We could make a lot of effort to get rid of it, but in the end the result would be the same. So why bother? What really is the difference between 10 to the 100 and infinity? Well, that's the question, right? Will the result be the same? Or do we actually get something wrong when we use infinity and we don't notice? I don't have a good answer to this, but I think it's a fair question to ask. And this brings me to the ultra-finitists. This is a philosophical movement of people who not only want to get rid of all infinities in physics or in the maths that we use in physics, but they also want to get rid of all really large numbers. Concretely, Joel Hamkins, a maths professor at the University of Notre Dame in Indiana, says, according to ultra-finitism, the various extremely large numbers mathematicians conventionally take themselves to describe, such as 10 to the 100, do not actually exist. The new thing is now that mathematicians are trying to figure out how to define mathematics using only small numbers, like consistent ultra-finitist logic or bounded arithmetic, especially when it comes to complexity bounds. That is the question of what you can or cannot compute and of how complexity grows. They had an entire conference on this just in April. So the ultra-finitist philosophy has this mathematical backbone. And this in return might impact physics. It could explain, for example, why entropy seems to have a maximum bound that black holes fulfill. It could explain why we have infinities creeping up on us in quantum theory. Or maybe it could even help us quantize gravity by doing away with the infinities that we keep running into. Maybe... This is the tool we need to make progress in the foundations of physics. Let me be honest though, I'm not sure I understand what it means to say that a number like 10 to the 100 doesn't exist. 
Like, I mean, I can write it down and compute with it, so how does it not exist? I can understand that physically certain quantities, like, say, the number of protons in the universe might be finite, but denying the existence of numbers? That's another level of denialism entirely. So I don't see the point, but I'm trying to be open-minded about these things. Maybe there's something to it that I can't see. And in any case, I see it as my job to keep you informed regardless of whether I approve. So here you go, number deniers. Next week, rectangles don't exist. How does that work? Why is that so? If those are questions you also like to ask, you should really have a look at Brilliant. It's a great way to practice your problem-solving skills and your critical thinking. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. What you see here is from their newly updated maths courses. No matter how abstract the topic seems, Brilliant's courses have intuitive visualizations that really click into my brain. I found it to be a highly effective way to build up knowledge. And Brilliant covers a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses just what I'm interested in. Sounds good? I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free and if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.